Hi, Coach Powers here, and I'm excited to get going with this semester uh, learning about science. Uh, this class is physical science, and we're going to learn a lot about the basics of chemistry and physics. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about why I love science first. Uh, it is so applicable, okay? We use it on our everyday life, and in particular, what we're talking about today, scientific method and measurements. These are things that you're going to be able to use day to day in your life. And so I hope you embrace these things because uh, not only use them this semester and all the stuff that we do, uh, but you're going to be using this stuff for the rest of your life. Uh, each and every day, you come up against problems, you solve those problems, and if you learn the scientific method and how to apply the scientific method, you're going to be able to solve those problems in a great way. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, <clears throat> this is chapter one, our introduction to science. And what we are going to be learning here today, um, these are just two of our objectives we're going to start with here, identify the requirements of science. What is it that makes science science? How do we define what science is? Um, and then looking at scientific hypotheses, theories, laws, and models. And particularly, I want you to try to figure out the difference between theory and law, because a lot of times um, we have some classical definitions of these two that are not really great. We're trying to... Uh, introduce these newer concepts of what theory and law are um, into your uh, brain here today. And I say newer in the sense that uh, when I was a kid, I did not learn them this way. So, uh, and I've taught them in a different way many other times. And I like the way that they're being taught here. So pay attention to that as we get to it. So let's start here with what science is, okay? Now science is knowledge. Now that's a little bit, uh, you know, too general, right? So there's all, there's tons of knowledge out there, tons of things that we can know. Science isn't all of them. However, if we think about what we know based upon observing, usually the physical world, right, nature, um, then now we're getting close to what science is, observations that give us some knowledge. And what are we doing? We're actually doing experiments. We're learning things through experimentations that are, repeatable and we get these repeatable uh, results and now we're getting into the nitty-gritty of what science is so it is it is knowledge but it's also the process by which we attain that knowledge through experimentation and observation okay so if i say let's go do science we're talking about doing experiments um, we're learning things we're gathering knowledge through experiments and observations and so it's not just all knowledge okay now this chart here um, is just kind of showing you uh, various different branches of science uh, we don't need to go into that into detail, but it is kind of fun to see how um, science is, um, you know, kind of a lot of different ca characteristics. We're going to be focusing on physics and chemistry this year. It's all part of physical science, uh, and that's going to be our focus. It's a really fun part of the scientific field. Lots of fun things you get to do in physics and chemistry. <clears throat> all right, so let's look at what a hypothesis is. Um, one of the things we really want to focus in on here when we use the word hypothesis, we want to talk about something that is tested, okay? So a hypothesis needs to be testable. I can't come up with some um, crazy thing like, you know, um, stars are made up of the lost teeth of children. Um, well, that's not really a hypothesis because it's not testable. Uh, the whole idea that teeth are lost um, means that I don't have anything to test, right? Because they're lost. So um, something that's not testable is not a good hypothesis. Now it can be kind of crazy. Um, you know, the moon is made up of cheese. Well, that's testable, right? Because we can, we've been to the moon. We're going to go again to the moon. We hope soon, right? Um, and so that would be testable. That would be a hypothesis that we could actually test. Um, but we are answering a question, right? So what's the moon made of? It's made of cheese. No, it's not, right? It's made of something else. But um, you might have thought if you were, <laughs> you know, in a per certain part of <laughs> history, you might have thought something a little bit crazy like that. Um, but you're just going to guess. And, you know, something with a hypothesis is it needs to be based upon prior experiment, uh, prior experience or, or some experimentation of some sort, uh, some sort of background knowledge. You shouldn't just be coming up with... Uh, you know, hypothesis just out of the blue. It's, it should not be absurd. It should be based on some of your observations. And so when we come up with hypothesis, we're coming up with an answer to a question that we can test, okay? Um, so, you know, you could say something like, um, when I drop this pen, I think it's going to, 
Now, prior experience says it should fall down. And so my hypothesis would be, oh, yes, I think it's going to fall down. Okay. So that would be a good example there. Um, scientific law. Now, the difference between law and theory, right? Law is answering the question what? Theory is answering the question why? So I really want you to focus on the description of a natural event. That's the what. And a lot of times this will be in the form of a mathematical equation. Okay, not always. But if you see a mathematical equation or a number of some sort, you might have stumbled across one of our laws. Okay, that's a... That's one of those clues that might get you into it. The next one is a theory. It's explaining why. Now, notice that both of these, this is very important here, both of these have been tested. Now, the classical definitions that uh, I learned when I was a kid kind of talked about laws being different than theories because laws have been tested over and over and over again, and theories were just kind of tested a little bit. Well, that's just not the way to think about it, okay? Although I know that's still being taught in a lot of schools. A lot of my students, perhaps some of you have been taught that before. But both of these have been tested over and over and over again. But the law is telling you what, okay, it's describing something just in general. Like this marker, when it falls, it is going to be traveling at 9.8 meters per second squared. It's something that I observe and I can measure, and there's a, there's a mathematical formula that explains that. Um, that's a law. The theory is an explanation of why it's happening. This marker is going to fall because of a force called gravity, okay? Describing the because of it. And so that's the difference between law and theory. So make sure you've got that cemented in your brain. Those are really important. All right. So both of them, theories and laws. Lots of observations, repeatable tests can help us make predictions, okay? Remember, it's important to understand that these things can change. These are going to be changed. What, it can change a law? Yeah, when we discover something new, maybe we didn't understand uh, everything about it before. If we discover something new, we might have to change. Remember that laws are not proven okay, forever. There's nothing that's proven forever. Um, we might find some new information at some point that helps understand a degree of depth that we didn't have before. And so just keep in mind that these things are going to be changed. And it's not wrong for a theory to change. It's not wrong. For a lot of change, it doesn't mean that everything we knew about it was wrong. It just means we might not have had enough detail. Okay, and so we modify theories, we modify laws. That's a part of science. As a scientist, you have to be willing to make changes. You make observations, and then you make a change to what you thought before was right when you realize that you were wrong. Okay, unlike in politics, where you can't ever be changing your mind. In science, we're like, yeah, I was wrong before, and now I can be. I can I know the truth now. And it's so much better to be a scientist than a politician because you can change your mind when you're shown to be wrong. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I've given you these examples basically as I've been talking. If you if you don't ever want to push pause on any of these videos, hit the pause button, then we move on. Um, you know, and then you can kind of take your own time at these. But we've already basically talked about those, but you can kind of reemphasize what these are, okay? After much testing, when I dropped the pen, it fell due to gravity. Your keyword's there, right? This means that this is a, right, theory, okay? That's a big T for a theory. If I let go of the pen that glows in the dark, it'll fall to the ground. So now we have this new, you know, characteristic, something I have never tested before. I've never tested a glow-in-the-dark pen. Oh, my goodness, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to fall to the ground just like before. But I don't know. So this is my hypothesis. I've got to test it. That's definitely testable, right? And then here you can again see that we're dealing with that number, right? We're testing and finding out what happens to the pen. We can actually give it a what. It's falling at what? 9.8 meters per second squared. And so this is going to be your law. Okay? So make sure that you can distinguish between those. All right. <clears throat> now, models. Models are very important in science. Okay, We have to be able to describe something that's either too big, too complex, too small to study easy. Okay, So we might have too small. We might have too complex. We might have too big uh, would be another thing besides just being complex, it would just be huge, right? And so we create models. Oh, huh, there's this planet called Saturn. Now I've got a little model of it, right? So that's what models are doing. They're representing things. They help us understand things. Now, things like the model of the atom, 
sometimes it's like, okay, this is kind of how it works. And, you know, in actuality, we are still using models today that are not correct, but they help us to understand something a little bit better. So you guys have seen the typical model of the atom, you know, where you've got the nucleus and you've got the different, you know, rings kind of like around uh, planets around the sun. That model is not accurate. However, it still helps us to conceptualize and understand the atom in ways that are important that we wouldn't understand if we didn't have that model. So models are important. We use them in science all the time. Okay. Here's a couple other model of the atom there. You guys have probably seen this one in life science or uh, in biology. And this one is called a Punnett square. That's right. Um, and then, of course, we've got our sun with our uh, planets. So we have a model of the solar system. So too big, right? <clears throat> too small. And in some ways, it's pretty complex, right? It was tough to figure out how everything worked together. Gregor Mendel came up with uh, uh, the Punnett square to help us understand how genetics, genetics was working. Um, and so great things models are in science. We use them all the time. Okay, so now we've covered this first section, 1.1. And we have our objectives. Do we know the requirements of science? Got to be testable, right? And we have to be able to observe it through repeated experiments, okay? And it's knowledge. Difference between hypothesis, theory, law, and model. Yeah, I think we got enough. Big thing, remember, theory, law. Right, good, good, okay? Remember, the theory is a why, the law is a what, okay? And hypothesis must be, right, testable. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a stop there, and uh, then we'll go on and we'll talk about the next section here in just a bit.